Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be doing the Eosheen EV900D review. Now, this is actually my second pair. The first one I took apart and I've just been using the screen because it's so beautiful. Uh, I modified it and did a couple things. I might release that project if you guys are interested, but let's just talk about this. Now, this was sent to me by Banggood. Thank you, Banggood, for official review. So I took it out for its review and what I can tell you right off the bat, the latency is there. It is noticeable, especially if you're using it trying to hit gates and stuff, you will notice it and it can mess with your flying somewhat. However, saying that it doesn't make it a bad goggle. Where this excels is the image quality and the LCD. Now, and again, if you're using this for a latency sensitive application, it is not for you take that into consideration. Now, if you don't care about that, it's, it's not that big of a latency. For example, today I was flying my wing and I was actually using this, but while using this, I was like, wait, I swear that this screen looks a lot better than my fast track HDOs. And it does because it does have hardware and software upscaling. So what that means is it takes the image, it processes it and it makes it better. And that is why you see the latency. However, in order for Eosheen to make an upscaled image or any company have it be with low latency will end up costing a substantial amount of money. This thing could probably run over two grand if you wanted something of that nature. So you got to keep that in mind. Now, talking about the latency, it doesn't make it a bad goggle. It just doesn't make it for you, but it has its own applications. If you wanted to chill and have a really nice screen, you can totally do that. So I think this is also possibly a V2 because my first one that I received, they didn't have these bushings here or these little spacers, as you can tell. Now, these are in order to protect basically most of our noses because our noses would touch here on the first version. However, with this one, it pushes it away from your face, but there's a catch also. You're going to get a lot of light leakage from the bottom. It's something to be expected. It's not that bad, but it's just something to take note of here. Now, and again, the screen image quality is superb, especially I was using the new FXT cameras. I've gotten a couple of those lately, and I swear those are just insanely just beautiful. I mean, they make everything look really nice. With this setup, it was just absolutely phenomenal. So if you're using wings and you're not trying to race and you're just hit chilling and you just want something with really good quality and you're not into goggles like these type of goggles or you can't afford these goggles, you could possibly consider this actually. It's really good. But again, it also has one more downfall, which is there is no DVR. When I first got this, I was trying to put my SD card and you actually just dropped it in. There's nothing. There's no DVR here. However, what they do is they provide you with an AV in and an AV out. It acts as both AV in and AV out. So you can pipe out the video into some sort of external DVR. Now here's one. This one comes with its own battery and it's rechargeable by USB. However, I'm still testing this, thoroughly testing this to come back and show you every single feature and what can it be used for and where it's not so good parts in. But some of its features are really nice. For example, the inbuilt battery, charging via USB, battery indicator. So it's a really nice one, but there we'll get into this in a later video. It's, it's, it's nice, but there's also a catch on this guy here. Now, back to the goggle here. The screen was noticeably better than the Fat Shark HDOs, and that is to be expected. They're using a proper screen and really great software upscaling. So, they're really just upscaling that image quite dramatically, actually. Now, I have taken this apart before, and it does have true diversity receivers. So, that means it does have two receivers inside. So, that's something really nice. And when it's switching between them, there is no breakup, and it's just a very smooth transition, which you don't even notice, which is a huge plus. Now, also, the features and the ease of use of this goggle is really well thought out. You have a single button for the band and a single button for channel, which is something I really like to see more. So you don't have to, you know, hold that same button twice. It just gets annoying. You have a separate button for each, which is a huge plus. Power on button. You do have a fan inside, but not to defog the, the, the glasses, the, the lenses. I don't think they'll get fogged up, but I, I don't know. I can't answer that. Uh, but the fan inside is to keep the internal ICs cool because it is doing some kind of processing inside. You also do have a search button and a source button. So you can choose to watch from receiver A or receiver B, as well as diversity mode and an AV in mode. Also the HDMI in. Yes, it takes HDMI in and they do provide you with the cable, which is HDMI to a mini HDMI, which is really nice to see here. Also, they provide you with external power source. I don't know what's the maximum it could take, but probably no more than a 2S. I'll check it and I'll leave it here to let you know. So let's see what else it comes with. It actually comes with the carrying case here right out of the box. It comes with a really nice pouch 
and um, just everything is really well packed together and just fits wherever you go without having to remove anything. It also comes with a nice little USB charger here. It's still brand new, I haven't opened it. They also do provide you with two antennas. They give you some kind of a patch and some kind of a circularized polar antenna. And I was using them and using them, I got pretty decent range. However, nothing really static where I can tell you, oh my God, I got three kilometers of range because I didn't test that. But I think that would make for an interesting video, which I'll test in a later video. Once I do my long range testing, I'll probably bring this over and see how far it can get. I'll plug in a DVR along with it and we'll see its overall reception. So overall, uh, this goggle is not for everyone. That's something to be noted here. It does have some latency. The image quality is phenomenal. So if you're into the image quality more than anything, then this might be the goggle for you. Now, another thing that I need to mention is the screen size. The screen size is really nice. It's a 16 by nine screen size and uh, you can switch to four by three, but you might as well just get used to flying 16 by nine, even if you're using a four by three camera. This is my opinion and this is a personal taste type of thing. So that comes back to you. Also, the screen is big, but not too big, but still kind of big, if that kind of makes sense. What do I mean by that? Well, when we use goggles, we don't really have to move our eyes much to see everything. Everything is just laid out in front of us and our eyes usually are just doing some micro movements. Here, when you're looking from the top corner to the bottom corner, you do feel that you, you do tend to move your eyes slightly. So you will have to kind of basically just look around a little bit less than other goggles, which have bigger screens, uh, but you still have to do that. So yeah, that's just something to take note of here. It doesn't mean it's bad. It doesn't mean it's good. Just it's a personal preference type of thing. And goggles are very hard to review. And well, I think that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And I'll have links to everything down below. If you could check those out, those greatly support the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.